Well, all right, you want to make something and you want people to see it. Oh, well, there will be a trade-off. Read your contract. Um, you can't write your own terms, obviously, and you also can't cancel it. <laughs> so just so you know, if you someday wish to retire from public life, the people will still feel entitled to you. You know, you should feel lucky. So many people want this chance. The money, the attention, the adoring fans. <laughs> Don't forget to smile. Smile. Hello, my dudes. My name is Tiffany. Welcome back to my series, Internet Analysis. Today, I want to talk about de moi and the normalization of stalking celebrities. Okay, maybe stalking is a little bit extreme, but I had to pick an interesting title. Stick with me. Some insist that celebrities should never complain. They're rich, famous, and privileged, and any downsides that come along with fame, such as loss of privacy, are part of the deal. It just comes with the territory. It is a popularly held belief that in exchange for fame, you must trade your privacy. To be famous is to lose parts of your humanity. You become objectified. You are no longer a person, a private citizen. You are a figure for the consumption of the public. You have to realize that we're people and that we need to, we just need privacy and we need our respect. And, and those are things that you have to have as a human. There's an unspoken social contract of fame. You signed up for this. Well, nobody literally signed up for this. If it were as simple as going and signing up to be famous, many would do it. Aside from being born into a famous family and inheriting fame by default, or those pop culture figures who are just famous for being famous, becoming famous requires some amount of work and probably a lot of luck. But I like to think for most people who end up being celebrities, that probably isn't their initial goal. More likely, they're artists. They want to act, play music, perform. Yes, they want people to see and appreciate their work, to be recognized and celebrated by their peers. And yes, ideally, they'd earn a living from their art. They deserve to be paid for their labor and the value their work generates. Okay, maybe I'm romanticizing this a bit much. For every person out there trying to do art for art's sake, there are wannabes and grifters and attention seekers who will do anything for a drop of clout. I know that. But anyway, in this video, I want to explore celebrity and fan culture, the consequences of fame, and who deserves privacy. Let's start with the celebrity gossip industry. TMZ, E! Entertainment, magazines, web forums. There's a massive media ecosystem of professionals, amateurs, and fans creating and consuming content about celebrities. I got a message on my Instagram when I asked my followers about this, and they said, I am hypocritical in that I do click on celebrity photos and thus keep paparazzi working even though I disagree. And same, even as I was writing this video, I fell down multiple celebrity news rabbit holes. <laughs> I do not blame anyone for being interested in this kind of stuff. It's designed to be intriguing. And also this content is constantly thrown at us, whether it's on your Instagram Explore page or on the magazine covers in the grocery store lines. As much as you try to, you know, be above the gossip or whatever, it's hard to not be tempted to take a little look. The point of this video is not to shame the average person for their interest in celebrity news or gossip. As usual, I just like to raise questions and I think that there's a lot of nuance in this topic. I've already talked to some of Nathan's family about it and we've been having some very interesting discussions, so I think there's just a lot to be said. But before we continue, let's give a shout out to today's sponsor, NordVPN. Speaking of privacy, most of my work and life are on the internet, so it is very important to me to protect myself online. In case you don't know what a VPN is, it's a virtual private network that encrypts your data, which protects your internet connection and your privacy online. Right, I've been using NordVPN for a few years now, like my phone and my laptop are covered. You can actually have up to six simultaneous connections. On my laptop, I have the extension for my Chrome browser, so it really only takes just a couple of clicks to get connected, and then I just know that I'm secure. And a VPN is definitely an essential whenever I'm using public Wi-Fi, like at the airport or a coffee shop. Yeah, you do not want to leave your data open to hackers. And also I use it for entertainment. Say a show I want to watch isn't available where I am, I can use NordVPN to switch my IP to a different country, and I'm in France. Oh, she can't wink. How tragic. <laughs> if you want to try it out, NordVPN has a 30-day money-back guarantee. So, if you don't have a VPN yet, I highly recommend using the link in my description. You can get 73% off a two-year subscription to NordVPN with an additional four months for free. So let's get back into it. First, 
What is De Moi? Aside from being nonsense French, it is an Instagram page with over a million followers and it's known as the internet's best celebrity gossip, apparently. Run by an anonymous New York City woman, De Moi has exploded in popularity this year by sharing both scandalous and shockingly mundane updates about the A-list on the platform's stories feature. This user-submitted gossip disappears after 24 hours, making it all the more important for interested parties to click through on a daily basis. And all of the gossip is entirely unverified because the person who runs the page is not a journalist. They explain it as, you know, take everything with a pinch of salt, make your own judgments. And the posts mainly address who's been spotted out together, where do most celebrities hang out, how do they behave, and other gossip. Obviously, celebrity stories and anecdotes have always been popular, and they are also shared frequently on Twitter or TikTok. But De Moi is uniquely enticing for many. A huge, fresh batch of gossip is posted nearly every day. I think my favorite part of the day is sitting down and reading De Moi like I'm a six-year-old man reading the morning paper with my cup of coffee. Like, I just need to soak it all in. Like, I need the celeb gossip. Sometimes, De Moi has a populist bent. Contributors have taken to task those who are rude to fans, dismissive of service employees, or unpleasant with hired help. It's fascinating because, obviously, De Moi is popular with, you know, ordinary folks, but it's also followed by quite a few celebrities. So obviously there are some celebrities who just like to hear what's being posted about other celebrities, or perhaps even themselves, but some celebrities do have concerns of defamation or potential damage to their reputations based on what these posts reveal, because this page is has become like a cult classic on Instagram. Can anything be a cult classic if it's contemporary? Never mind. This article talked about like the legality of gossip and how there's really not a case to be made for defamation because nothing can really be confirmed or traced back to anywhere. But also it's unlikely that a complete lie would ever be posted without being kind of corrected by other people because there tends to be a general consensus of who everyone knows to be like really kind or really friendly celebrities and who's considered to be more rude to say the least. A lot of people like to criticize what's posted and that takes the fun out of it. I don't wanna be criticized for reposting something that somebody sent me. Give me a break, you know what I mean? That quote was interesting. So even though the page could potentially cause harm or at least spread, you know, misinformation, whatever, the page manager of Demois really doesn't take any responsibility for the platform. Anyway, one perk of following this page is learning where the celebrity hotspots are and perhaps even learning where one of your favorite celebrities likes to hang out. Larry David at Mastro's Malibu tonight with a younger woman with bangs. Spotted Timothy Chalamet at Cafe Francais. So this was actually one of the things that inspired me to write this video, and that is questioning how okay it is to publicize these kind of interactions. Obviously, a celebrity being spotted outside, these are public interactions by nature, but I still don't think that they should be put on blast. Unless celebrities are going to like notorious celebrity spots, like there are certain restaurants that celebrities frequent, they always know the paparazzi is gonna be around there, many go there intentionally to be photographed or be seen, but I do think there's a difference in publicizing a celebrity's like local coffee shop that they go to, or their bodega, or the CVS that they stop by. I just think people deserve a bit of peace and privacy when they're going about their day running errands. If I were a very famous celebrity, I think I would be put on edge knowing that now, you know, my favorite little local spot has been posted on this Instagram account with a million followers and people might know to look out for me there. So now I might not wanna go to that same coffee shop again. I got another interesting response on my Instagram from someone, they said, they're public figures in public spaces, so they should not go in public if they don't want to be seen. And I just couldn't believe that, because I'm like, are we really saying that celebrities shouldn't exist in public? I think that's a bit extreme. I think it makes sense to be noticed by the nature of being a celebrity. You're someone that people would be excited to see. That's understandable. But again, I think the difference is posting about it, and specifically on a page like this that 
that's one of the main things that are posted are these sightings. It just encourages a lot of the same behavior. The other types of posts on this page include blind items and other gossip. So like blind items block out some of the identifying information. They're kind of like anonymous tips, but you're supposed to be able to figure out who it's about or what it's about. And a lot of the followers of Demois take this upon themselves to solve these mysteries. There's a lot of sleuthing and speculation that happens naturally. And I would love to talk about the whole issue of online sleuthing communities because we've seen a lot of this like in the true crime community. People love investigating and collecting clues and feeling like you're solving puzzles. There's so much to get into. Honestly, that is a whole other video that I would like to make someday. So basically that's the Demois Instagram. We'll talk more about it later, but let's continue. Paparazzi and the Celebrity Photo Marketplace. I did a few little polls on my Instagram and 87% of respondents of my followers do not approve of paparazzi, which is not too surprising. I think especially recently with the discourse around like the early 2000s celebrity paparazzi culture, which was very intense, and Britney Spears, Free Britney specifically, many of us have been reminded just how brutal and aggressive this treatment was. Celebrities were not just having their photo taken, there was a lot of harassment, stalking, and provocation. What do you think it'll take to get the paparazzi to leave you alone? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Is that one of your biggest wishes? <laughs> yeah. The paparazzi aim to catch celebrities in the most unflattering positions. With paparazzi, we want drama, we want meltdowns, we want to see the celebrity attacking the paparazzi, they cracked. We want sex and drugs, messy behavior. That sells. So again, I think most of us agree paid paparazzi, especially when they don't respect boundaries or space, they're kind of terrible. Pages like Demois also encourage amateur paparazzi. So now the followers of Demois get to interact with the account and become part of it if they themselves spot a celebrity, can send in some gossip or a tip, or especially if they can get a photo that's even more valuable. Again, I think a lot of this is like gamifying the experience of citing celebrities. Because ordinarily that is exciting for anyone to see somebody you recognize and go, oh, cool, what are they doing around here? <laughs> but now it's not just a matter of taking a picture for yourself, it's a matter of participating in the culture of Demois. And again, Demois doesn't seem to have much of a conscience or a moral compass when it comes to what is acceptable. The woman defended publishing an anecdote from an alleged former neighbor of Taylor Swift about scenes viewed through Swift's kitchen window. I think it's pretty easy to say that crosses a line. Taking photos of celebrities in public can become very dehumanizing very fast. We're almost treating celebrities like an object in a treasure hunt, like ding, got my picture, on to the next one. Sometimes they don't even say hello or greet the celebrity, they just like shove a camera in their face. And I think that's rude obviously. One of my big questions for this video is, is it okay to take low key pictures of celebrities where you're just trying to like snap real quick? They don't even see, they don't even notice you. Couldn't do them any harm, right? I have to say, if one of my favorite celebrities walked by, I would be absolutely tempted to take a little picture, remember that moment. So I pulled my Instagram followers and 86% said no, it's not okay to take these low key pictures without consent. But then only 70% said they had not or would not do it. So obviously there's a bit of a discrepancy there. And based on the responses, people said that it comes down to the difference between snapping a picture for yourself or to show to some of your friends versus snapping a picture with the intent to share it really publicly, such as submitting it to Demois. Again, a page with a million Instagram followers. I do think that is a valid distinction. By the way, I wanna mention something interesting. Demois has merch, and if a Demois follower is spotted in public wearing the merch, someone else will take a sneaky picture of them and submit it to Demois. So it's like by buying the merch and going out in public wearing it, you are subjecting yourself 
to this assumed culture that if you're spotted, someone may take a secret picture of you. And that's like very fascinating, very meta, dare I say. But still, even trying to take low key pictures can be an invasion of privacy. And it's potentially even more unsettling because you're trying to hide it, which I'm sure can make celebrities feel very uncomfortable as if someone could always be lurking behind them around the corner, snapping a picture of them at any moment. Cole Sprouse used to run an Instagram account called Camera Duels. If he caught people trying to take a picture of him, he would snap a picture of them in retaliation and post it to the account. His NYU era was all about social experiments. If you remember the whole Tumblr thing, I, it's too much. <laughs> And I remember it being fascinating and pretty funny to see how obvious most people are even when they're trying to be very nonchalant. And I, again, I can't imagine what it's like to constantly have people like just doing that to you. That's my nightmare actually. I do think on one hand there is a power imbalance there in the dynamic of a celebrity putting a random person on blast publicly. But also the point was to prove to that person and everyone else watching how uncomfortable it is to have someone suddenly take a picture of you without your permission. But ironically, this account may have fueled even more photos of Cole in that people still wanted pictures of him but also wanted to be in to participate in a camera duel. So as a fan, that might be a win-win. How many fans can say that their fave has a picture of them in their camera roll? A fascinating time, to be honest. Absolutely classic Cole Sprouse, I'm a weirdo, I'm weird. Continuing on, what about asking a celebrity for a photo? At least the consent is there, that's important. I do believe that there's an etiquette and when it is okay to ask a celebrity for a photo. If they are at an event, they're working, they're making a public appearance, I think it's okay to take pictures of them or ask for photos if you're within reach. But if they're like quietly eating at a restaurant with friends or family, leave them alone. It's not cool to interrupt anyone's meal to ask for a photo. My foot is majorly asleep. This hurts so bad. Some people insist that celebrities owe fans photos, but I strongly disagree. Years ago, I actually made this video about an Ian Summerhalder fan interaction. Roll the clip. Please, yeah. Hey guys, listen. No, no, stop. Everybody listen. I love you guys. I'm not taking a single photo today. It's my day. Don't follow us, please. I love you guys. You're so good to us. You're so awesome. No, that's not just one. Hey, I'm right here. Oh my God. But you guys don't follow us, please. I love you guys. Do not follow us, okay? The thing said here that he's absolutely disgusting. And all the comments were like, he made that girl cry. How can he just take a picture with them? You shouldn't be famous if you can't just take pictures with fans. Yes, taking pictures with fans is part of the deal. And yes, I'm sure he does that every single day. We can't do this to celebrities. I know a lot of people are like, you shouldn't feel bad for a celebrity. They're famous and they're rich, so they should give us everything that we want. No, there's still a person who would like just the slightest sliver of privacy or a minute in the day to walk on the street and not be followed, yelled at, grabbed for a selfie. I can only imagine what they go through. And I actually agree with like 99% of what I said in that video, so it still holds up. My attitude in 2015 was very different. I was very sarcastic. I think I still am. But I think I was making decent points. Who is owed privacy or anonymity? In this article, the New York Times agreed to grant the administrator of Demois anonymity due to her concerns for privacy and safety. Why can the Demois creator stay anonymous and be owed privacy when they are not granting it to celebrities? They are a private citizen, but now they've curated this account with over a million followers. It's influential. It has an impact on celebrity culture. So have they now not entered the social contract of fame, bringing it back? They did not create this page to become famous. It just happened. So, you know, the fame came upon them. But now that they are in this position, do they have a responsibility to be more accountable for what they post? And does that accountability include potentially having their identity revealed? Questions. And by the way, I've been using she, her, and they, them interchangeably to describe Demois because the article used she, her, but also implied that Demois might someday be transferred to a different owner or be run by multiple people, so who knows. Anyway, I find the concept of anonymity very fascinating in regard to Demois and the whole community because they're actually very 
very invested in maintaining their anonymity and their privacy. The submissions are all anonymous. They often say, Anon, please. Oh, I've been waiting to say that. It's like a running joke now, a rite of passage in the Dumois world. And it is totally understandable that random people submitting to this page would like to remain anonymous. Most people would not want to participate in this exchange if they knew that their account, their name, their face, would be tied to their submission. There is a genuine big difference between private internet users and mainstream celebrities. I get that. But I still do just find it interesting that privacy and discretion are valued so highly in a community that was kind of formed on a concept that's basically the antithesis of that, at least for celebrities. Do you know what I mean? I'm not gonna pretend, again, that there isn't a difference of power between a celebrity and a, an internet rando or a person on the street. But again, I think maybe the followers of Demois and the people who do their submissions should think a little bit more about their values in terms of privacy. Reflect. They might decide, fuck it, I don't care about celebrity privacy. <laughs> okay. Interestingly, also, the sleuthing Demois community has now in addition to trying to figure out what the blind items mean and who they're about, they also try to find out the identity of Demois themselves. So this is fascinating. There are like entire Facebook groups and stuff that try to figure this out and they're like looking for clues. It's intense. And of course, the creator of Demois is not a fan of this. When I asked whether her desire to maintain anonymity was at odds with her willingness to post about others, the woman balked. They're celebrities, she said. They chose to be in the public eye. But Demois also posts about famous people's spouses and children, I pointed out. The woman countered that she is neither of those things. I run an Instagram account. It lives in the phone. It's not real life. I don't know this woman, clearly. But based on her answers in this interview, I don't like her philosophy. I think it is ridiculous to say that social media only exists in the phone and not real life. We should all be well aware by now that social media does have real world implications. And I just think that's a cop out answer, Demois. Continuing on. Do public figures deserve privacy? One of my Instagram followers said, I think by becoming a public figure, you do have to sacrifice some of your privacy that you otherwise would be entitled to if you were a private citizen. And I would say that public figures include public servants, such as politicians. People running for office know that they are going to face more criticism and scrutiny for their work and their public lives, and that they should expect to be held accountable, <laughs> ideally. And I think it's an interesting question to ask, where do we draw the line of who is an intentional public figure? If you've run for office, yes, that's obvious. But if we assume that anyone with a following or some kind of influence is automatically a public figure, how many followers do you need? 10,000? 100,000? The truth is there isn't one moment where you transition to that status of public figure, so it can be a little bit messy. In modern society, the clash between one's right to privacy and the right of the public to be informed, in conjunction with the freedom of the press, is a matter which has occupied the legal literature and the courts on many occasions. This clash becomes even more evident when it refers to the private life of public figures, where the interest of the public is more intensive. So then how do we define what is of public interest? With politicians, other public officials, public servants, obviously the decisions involving their work are of public interest, and often aspects of their personal lives are very relevant to their work and their politics. Like politicians who claim to be staunchly opposed to certain behaviors or ideologies or lifestyles, but end up being exposed for engaging in a lot of those very same things. Wholesome family values, am I right? In the era of Demois, everything can be of public interest. And with our celebrity-obsessed culture, often we do feel entitled to know all personal information. We're invested in their personal lives and their relationships. I have to know what is happening with Ben and JLo 2.0. I think what topics are of public interest can depend on what they have publicly shared, what they have offered themselves. Did they consent to sharing it? But I think even if they change their mind, we should respect that to some extent. For example, if a celebrity previously talked or posted a lot about a specific relationship, you can't blame people, the audience, followers, for being interested or invested in it, but the celebrity does have every right to say, I don't wanna talk about that publicly anymore. Next, I think anything related to the celebrity's work 
is of public interest. That's fair game. Also, anything that is criminal is of public interest. And of course, there are many behaviors or actions that may not be legally criminal, but are still very harmful and are important for the public to know for the sake of perception. It's hard to draw the line, again, where personal flaws and mistakes blur into things that the public is entitled to know. But I do strongly believe that the families of celebrities, especially if they are not public figures themselves, they deserve privacy and children especially absolutely deserve privacy regardless of who is famous around them. One of my Instagram responses recommended reading this Rolling Stone interview of Miss Lauren Hill. So here are some of my favorite quotes. I think most people appreciate being recognized and appreciated for their work and sacrifice. That to me is a given, but living a real life is essential for anyone trying to stay connected to reality and continue making things that truly affect people. This becomes increasingly harder to do in the space people try to place stars in. The idea of artist as public property, I always had a problem with that. I agreed to share my art. I'm not agreeing necessarily to share myself. The entitlement that people often feel like they somehow own you or own a piece of you can be incredibly dangerous. The celebrity is often treated like a sacrifice, the fatted calf, then boxed in and harshly judged for the very normal and natural responses to abnormal circumstances. I saw someone lambasted once for discussing episodes of anxiety before going on stage, as if anxiety was only a condition of the non-famous. It was absurd, like someone with a record out can't get a common cold. Someone in love with the art doesn't not experience fear or anxiety, they just do their best to transcend it or work beyond it so that the art or the passion can be made manifest. Next, do influencers deserve privacy? In terms of the social contract of fame, again, it could be argued that anyone posting publicly on social media has agreed to it because at any moment your content can blow up. Fame or notoriety can be thrust upon you. Some might say by posting publicly, you've already agreed to the potential consequences of such. Also with influencers and social media, we have much stronger parasocial relationships than even people have with celebrities. So social media stars can have quite extreme experiences with their fans. Especially with creators like vloggers, some believe that because they share parts of their lives online, they owe random people more information or replies. I wanna mention Kelly Stamps in particular because I've seen her her post and talk a fair bit about how her fans have treated her in public. And I, I think she has a uniquely strong parasocial relationship, or rather her fans have that strong relationship with her. It must just be something about the way that she shares herself that makes these people feel so much more strongly connected to her than other content creators. Kelly has unfortunately dealt with stalkers, She's had people follow her around in public, demanding her phone number from her. Just truly unhinged behavior. I just don't understand why anyone thinks that that's acceptable. It's not something that you expect, again, when you're thinking about that social contract of fame, when you're starting to post online, you never anticipate that you can get famous, you can make a lot of money, but that you'll also potentially have to be dealing with these sort of interactions. That's scary. Again, some believe that because social media stars are supported by their fans, that the audience made you and therefore you owe them, even personally, individually. But I think we should definitely normalize adjusting our boundaries. Just because someone has shared certain information in the past, whether it is about themselves or relationships or certain topics, doesn't mean that they have to continue doing that forever. They can change their mind and if you really are a fan of someone, you should respect that. I think in a lot of this video, I've been thinking of myself. <laughs> Though my following is not massive, I've had a few experiences that have been off-putting, and I imagine, you know, as my channel grows or whatever, just the scale of being known grows and the potential for those scary interactions increases, and that is something that horrifies me. So that is kind of the lens that I've been looking at this topic from, like, I am not a celebrity, I am not an A-lister by any means, but even with my drop of clout, my little bit of influence, my corner of the internet where some people care about me, I've had a teeny taste, half of a sip of it, and um, it's a lot. Okay, let's get into final thoughts. I actually filmed like 10 minutes of footage for my conclusion, but I made zero points, so I'm gonna try to be brief. First question, is fame worth it? 
Being rich and famous sounds cool in theory, but imagine actually not being able to exist as an ordinary, delightfully anonymous person. Imagine having stalkers and legal battles and needing constant security. As I've been writing this video this week, I've just been thinking about it, imagining myself in that situation, and honestly, it's just very sad. I think the natural response to that much attention is just to isolate yourself. That and the fact that I did just watch the Britney vs. Spears documentary made me think of the iconic song, Lucky. She's so lucky. She's a star, but she cry cry cries in her lonely heart wishing is that it? If there's nothing missing in my life, then why do the tears come at night? I actually got goosebumps listening to it earlier, so it truly does cut deep. I feel like that's such a classic trope or stereotype, like, oh, poor rich person who's sad in their mansion. But I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> you can decide how much you sympathize for the, you know, sad rich people. But again, is it worth it? Do you have to be that rich and that famous? No, thank you. And my last point, inspired by one last Instagram mention, they said, people need to stop caring so much about what these artists are doing outside of art. And I love that. It brought me to this question. Would actors and musicians still be as interesting to us if we knew very little about their personal lives? I think part of the lore, the magic of celebrities is the whole gossip industry. The background, being able to make connections and try to unravel the lyrics of your favorite songs. The fascination is what makes celebrities seem larger than life. But what if we just thought of them as artists, as people doing their jobs, making stuff that we enjoy? Providing entertainment is labor and they do not owe us any insight into their personal lives, in my opinion. That's the video. As always, hope it made sense. First, I want to give a shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. You can get some bonus video content. We do live streams. I try to think of funky fun things to do every month. I appreciate you all. Big special thank you to the Uwu face, I think. Abby Hayden, Eric Danielson, Jeff, Jaden, Marty Schmeichel, Rebecca DeVilliers, and vivianoladun.com. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And thanks again to today's sponsor, NordVPN. If you would like to check them out and protect yourself online, use my link in the description. Thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for future internet analysis. And next time you see a celebrity in public, maybe just like enjoy the moment. Picture it didn't happen is a lie. Okay. <laughs> okay, thanks, bye.